Hi, it's Facebook Live time again. I'm Leslie Rogowski, creative director for The Beadsmiths and half of Team Leslie. Woo! -hoo! So, as promised, I'm going to show you how I made my peacock earrings. One of the, one of the greatest things about the line of symbols is how they make our designs finish up easier and add things to them and enrich them. So today, uh, my peacock earrings use the Latinaki kite earrings. And you can see that, I'll take it off my little stand. They're post earrings with a hole through the tip end so you can integrate them so perfectly into designs using, of course, kites, but other things too, because they have that wonderful geometric shape. You can see that the Latinaki kite endings come in the four fabulous metal finishes. We've got silver, gold plate, rose gold, and antique brass. So whatever your favorite flavor, you can match it up to the metal color. Okay, also, we have the tutorial all ready for you. Thanks to our fabulous team of graphics people, Charlotte Maria, who get the tutorials online in time, even when I'm late. So you can see here again, full color illustrations, step-by-step -step text to show you how these are gonna come together. They are, as I believe the intro on this post said, available right now on beadsmith.com forward slash I love beads under both the symbols category and the kite bead category. So check it out. And by the way, we would love to see when you do anything that I show you how to do, if you're bringing in your own colorways uh, we'd love to see what you do. So again, the Latinaki earrings. Oh, and by the way, they have hyperallergenic titanium posts. So that should make everybody happy. All right, let's get started. Like a lot of designs, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing. Janet Mark, good to see your hands again. My hands. Hi, Janet. This is for you. <laughs> so I like to do a crisscross stitch with two needles because it helps to eliminate having to go back. Thank you for posting that link. Um, yeah, it helps so that when you go back and forth, you have a minimal amount of thread and you don't have to sew up one side and down the other. You can crisscross and kind of build it as it goes. So here we go. As you can see, I did kind of an ombre effect. So I have three colors of kite beads and size 15 seed beads. I'm using six pound fire line and size 12 needles because of these little 15s. So the demo that I'm doing is the one that's very traditional sort of peacock colors, but I thought it would show up nice. So we have at the top, we have polychrome mint chocolate. Ooh, and then the body, the middle color is a uh, pastel petrol. I know it doesn't look pastel, but it's, it is. And at the bottom, one of my favorite of the laser patterns, the cracked or crackle in the Jet AB. So it has this wonderful iridescence can bring that up a little closer there you can see that all right so the first thing we're going to do we're going to start with the wide end of a kite a single 15 the wide end of another green make sure and it reminds you in the tutorial make sure when you're working with two hold beads you always have to check the holes before you sew anything because it's really frustrating if you are winding through your piece and you get back to step up to that second hole 
and there are mutants and you can't get it through and then you have to frog stitch it to undo it okay so we have a kite a 15 a kite and four 15s Uh, the 15s are um, Mayuki lined dark blue luster. So four 15s, the Latinaki, there's only one hole through that. Four 15s, one, two, three, four. And you're going to string them to the middle of your thread. And then I'm going to kind of hold my beads there. I'm going to put one of my needles down and work with the other for now. You like these colors. Thank you. So I'm going to sew all the way through these again and come out the wide end of the kite. So I'm holding it so it stays in the middle. And I'm going to go through the four 15s. So I have to tell you guys, it's really hot here today in Philadelphia. And I do not have air conditioning. I have a fan on, but my hands are sticking to all the beads. Okay, so I'm continuing around until I come out the wide end of the kite. Notice I'm not going through the 15s. I'm going to pull that into a snug little circle. And now I'm going to take the other thread and crisscross through to come out the other side, the other kite. So I'm going to take the thread that's coming out of the four 15s and I'm going to go through the kite wide end and the 15. And the other kite wide end, but not any of the 15s. So this is what it's going to look like for the first part, for the figure one. Now, because the post kind of can be a little cumbersome when you're stitching, I just flip it over and work with the post facing up when I when it starts to get in my way now if you do this if you want to work this way keep in mind that some finishes have a different look on either side so you want to make sure that the right side of your bead is facing up towards the flat side of the post and not the post side that's going to be sort of the back of the earring okay now it doesn't matter which thread you choose to work with next Now we're going to run beads along the side of the kite. I'm going to pick up five 15s. And this is how I hide my thread when I do a turnaround to come back and forth. So I'm picking up five. So there were four in the beginning, and now there's five. And as you follow the tutorial, you'll see that it, it changes back to four again to fit nicely along the side. So I have five 15s, and I'm sewing in the tip. Now, as you can see in the earring, the next row that I'm going to string across has th three kites with 15s. So I'm going to pick up a 15, a wide end of a petrol kite, a 15. I'm going to do this three times with a 15 and a kite. And then another 15. And I'm going to sew out the tip of the other kite on my left. Okay. I'm continuing with the thread in use here. I'm going to mirror what I did on the other side and string five 15s to come around the outside of that other side kite. And I'm sewing in the wide hole 
where my other thread is exiting through the kite through the little 15 that's in the middle and out through the wide end of the kite again being careful not to go through any 15s yet so we're going to have this now the way this works, one of the things to remember is when you come to do the little side beads that run down here, you're always going to be exiting from the wide end of the kite to do that. So then my next step is to sew through all the beads I just added to come out the wide end of this side. So I'm going to go down through the five fifteens along the side. I feel like I need background music. Would that be distracting? <laughs> All right. And follow the existing thread path through the kites and the 15s all the way around. Fifteen kite, fifteen, because when you do a crisscross, you're always sewing through the entire existing thread path again. Now I'm just coming out the kite. I am not going through the little fifteen that's right there. Oh, <laughs> that's my backyard. Paula commented that she can hear the birds. I am not closing the windows to make it quieter. I'm sorry, it's too hot. <laughs> yes, we're the only yard in our entire block that doesn't have a dog, so we have the wild kingdom out there. Now, I'm coming out this kite. Now I've picked up my other thread. I'm just going to pull the thread I was working with kind of hold it in my finger so it's out of the way and I'm going to sew through in the opposite direction that I just did so I'm sewing through those side 15s and through the row that I just added through the kite tip and the 15, then the kite wide ends, and the 15 and the kite, and the 15 and the kite, and I'm coming out the wide end on the other side. So it's a very symmetrical piece. So you can see my threads are now coming out either side. So again, you have a choice which thread you want to use to continue. Let's see if I can put this down and work with this like this. I'm trying to make it a little bigger. There we go. So I don't have to hold it up. So the next step is going to be to add 15s along the outside so we can crisscross through and add the next row of two of the same middle color petrol blue. Now I'm going to pick up four 15s. And the reason it changes from five to four, just so you know what goes on in a designer's mind, is because the way that kites are tilted differently depending on how many are in the row, these just, it sits nicer with only four. And that was just my experimentation. As I did it, I ended up taking a bead off. So there's four 15s. Now we're going to pick up a 15, a petrol through the wide end, a 15, a petrol through the wide end, and a 15. So we have two, oops, sorry, a 15, a kite, and a 15, and then we go through the tip of this row. So you have one kite sitting in between those, and we're going to repeat it on the other side. with a 15, a kite, and a 15, and we're going to come out 
just like this. One of the other benefits to a crisscross stitch is it reinforces it as you're sewing. So I put down the thread that I was using and now I'm going to add the side beads and go through and come out. Okay. One, two, three, four. So back through the row, the beads just added. The kites and the 15s. Don't skip any. They're little tiny guys. Okay. And again, I'm coming out the wide end of the kite, but not through that 15. Now my other thread is coming out the tip. I have to go through this side. I want to crisscross through, so I'm going to follow the round in the opposite direction. I'm going to go through the 15s and across the row, down the 15s, and out the other side of the new row that I just added. So you can see it's it's kind of a circular thing through the thread path to do the to do the crisscross. Back through the 15s on that side. Don't go through that little 15 there between them. Just go in the wide end through the kite, the 15 and kite all the way across. through the 15, out the kite wide end. Don't go through that 15 between the tip and the wide end, but you're gonna go down through the 15s along the side of the kite. And you can keep tugging on your threads to tighten it up. Now I'm gonna go across this last row of two beads that I added and come out the wide end of the kite on the other side through the 15, the tip of the middle kite, the 15, and out the wide end of the kite, again, avoiding that little 15 there. So, now, again, we have threads coming out both sides of the wide end. And we're ready to change to our last color. Four 15s with either thread. One, two, three, four. In through the tip of the kite, the petrol kite. Now we're going to pick up a 15 and a kite twice. I got stuck in my mat. There we go. 15, a kite, and a 15. And another kite and a 15. And we're going to go through the tip of the kite on the other side. Woohoo! Now I'm going to show you just a little different. Instead of picking up my other thread now, I'm just going to continue with this one because you have to go in this thread direction anyway. I'm going to pick up four and I'm going to skip that little 15 right there and I'm going to go through the wide end and through the whole row, 15, kite tip, 15, kite wide end and I want to come down and around and come out the wide end of the kite so I know I have to go through the thread path that I just added through the four fifteens through that row again the tip 
the kite, the 15 and the kite. It's like 90 degrees here today. I'm sure our friends in Vegas are like, ha, ha, ha. All right, now when you go through, come out the wide end of the kite and not that little 15. So you can do that and put the needle down. Pick up your other needle. Now we're going to crisscross through. We're going to come through the 15s and come out the other side of the kite. So I'm just going to hold that extra thread between my fingers so it's out of the way. And sew through the 15s following the existing thread path. Don't skip any beads and don't pierce your thread. Fire line's pretty hard to pierce. But if you're using colors where you're using a colored thread, <clears throat> some of those threads are a little easier to pierce, so just be careful. Sew back through to come out the other side. Kite 15. Kite. All right. And you can see the threads coming out on either side. Let's get that last bead. We're almost there. Four 15s. Sew through the tip. Pick up one 15. One kite. Oh, get in there. Okay. So a 15, a kite, a 15, go through the other kite tip, put that thread down, pick up the other thread, reflect what you just did with the other needle. Pick up four 15s, sew into the tip and crisscross through the single, the 15, the single kite, and the 15. Whoop, and come out. You should be coming out the wide end here, not the little 15. Now we're going to crisscross through with the other thread in the opposite direction, going through the 15s, this row, the 15s, and the last bead to come out the other side. So I'm just sewing back up and you can pull on the other thread if the first row of beads is uh, starting to loosen up. So through the four along the side, through the wide end, the 15 in the middle, the other kite wide end, don't get through that little bead there that's in between the kites. So down through the 15s on the side. And this is, don't get your beads caught. Sew through the tip and you're gonna sew through the 15 and the kite wide end. So again, you're coming out the wide end now of the single kite as the tip of the tail. Almost done, four more 15s. We're gonna add the 15s on the side of this last one. One, two, three, four. So through, you can pick up your other needle if you wanna do it this way. One, two, three, four. So through the tip. So I'll break it down so you can see. You've got the threads coming out either side. Now you're gonna take your thread, your needle on either side, and sew back following your existing thread path through those four 15s you just added. And you're gonna weave back into the piece following your existing thread path in reverse. 
sew through the wide end. Don't sew through the little 15 on this side. You don't sew through that bead until you're ready to step up and go through the next kite. So I've gone through that 15 now and I'm going to just keep sewing up through the beads to secure your thread and trim. Now I'm going to show you a little trick to help keep your little thread end in. The thread is going up the earring and so you don't want it to slide back down in the direction that you just came from. So once I get to a point where I've come through a 15 in an inconspicuous place and I'm going to do sew through and come over to the side here and I'm going to make a little half hitch around existing thread. I don't want to do it in the middle so I'm going to sew through the kite. There we go. So I'm going through the kite wide end and I'm going through the little 15 in between. Now because the 15s are so small by making a little knot after I've gone through it right there then I'll sew a little bit through and trim my thread and the knot's going to keep the thread from pulling out in the direction that I just sewed it. So all I'm doing is a half hitch which is like this. I've sewed around an existing thread and I'm pulling my thread with an extra tail. And you want to make sure that it's not around the bead, that it's between the 15 and the kite. And just weave, sew your needle back in. By now you have a, th a few thread paths through your beads. Remember to crisscross as you sew up, don't start sewing through the wrong little beads. Follow the diagrams. And you're going to do the same thing on this side. You're coming out of the tip of the kite and you're going to sew back up through the 15s and crisscross around through the piece in the opposite directions until you feel your thread is secure and then you're going to trim. So I'm just going to trim and trim. Don't they look like peacock bodies? I think they totally look like peacock bodies. And there you have it. Peacock earrings with the Latanaki kite earring findings. Again with the hypoallergenic titanium posts. So what'd you think? I hope this was fun. It really goes pretty fast and you're going to want to make them in all different colors. Remember you can find the whole line of symbols and other quality beadsmith beads tools and supplies at your favorite bead reseller. Thanks again to Charlotte and Maria for their help in posting, to Leslie Pope, my other half, partner in crime, who makes sure that everything is nice and edited and works the way I wrote it out. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, everybody be safe, stay cool, drink lots of water. We love beads. See ya!